It is August 10th, 2020. I came down here to Plymouth today to watch the return of the Mayflower after being in dry dock for almost three years. And it has just come into its birth and quite a lot of people were down there. While I was down there, I saw a man protesting with a sign. It said King Philip's War, which was a very, very brutal conflict indeed in the 1670s. So that inspired me to come up here to Burial Hill, where many of the original pilgrims are buried. And I'm at the gravesite of William Bradford himself. Now, we don't have the original tomb of or gravestone of William Bradford. Back in those days, not everybody was given a gravestone at all. And if they were, it might have been made out of wood, so it's long gone. But this monument was erected in his memory and you will see here that he was the governor of Plymouth Colony basically from 1621 when the first governor John Carver died in the very nasty winter when 50% of them died 51 people died out of a total of 102 uh, passengers on the Mayflower and he was the governor all the way through till 1657 with the exception of five years when he I guess took some time off you will see a Latin inscription down below and you will see some Hebrew uh, inscription on top William Bradford of course was a very educated man he uh, supposedly spoke six languages Latin Greek English Dutch of course from their time in the Netherlands etc and later he learned Hebrew so that he could read the Bible in the language to get the true meaning of what it said. Now I also want to pay attention to the grave of his son, Major William Bradford. There's a sign there saying this is where he's buried. Now his headstone actually does still exist and it is enclosed here in a somewhat more modern piece of concrete or stone. But you can see the inlay is his actual original headstone. He died the year in the, in the age of 79 years and he died somewhere uh, place around 1703 1704 in February now why why he is important with regards King Philip war is in 1621 William Bradford made a peace treaty with the sachem Massasoit which lasted for over 50 years to everybody's benefit but when William Bradford died and when Massasoit died as well, their two sons, Major Bradford, he was not the governor, but he was the military commander of the Plymouth forces. And Massasoit's son, who the English refer to as King Philip. They had a war called King Philip's War, which was Per capita of population, the most brutal conflict in North American history. It was basically a war of genocide. And it was a sad and ironic twist of fate that the sons of the two men who met in friendship and peace later engaged in the most bloody conflict on the mainland, basically, of North America, known as King Philip's War, which led to the total genocide and decimation of the Wampanoag natives in this area many that were not killed if captured they were sold into slavery not down to the Caribbean but actually over to Africa because there was not a market for them in the Caribbean because they did not make useful slaves because the concept of their freedom being curtailed was so alien to their spirit that their life expectancy as a slave was very very short and that is a small bit of history today on August the 10th. Thank you for watching.